Welcome everybody. Today we're here to talk about the Ayurvedic art of tongue diagnosis. Your tongue tells a story about your body and about your health. That's what we're here to talk about. My name is John Immel and I'm the director of Joyful Belly Ayurveda and also of our educational programs. This talk comes from our certification courses, the Mastering Ayurveda Digestion and Nutrition course and the Fundamentals of Natural Healing Ayurveda Health Counselor course. So if you like what you hear today, consider becoming one of our Ayurvedic students. So without further ado, let's just jump right into this exciting topic. Uh, tongue diagnosis is one of the most important parts of Ayurvedic assessment. It's something I do with every single one of my clients, whether I meet with a client uh, online or whether I meet with them in person, I always look at their tongue. Um, which means I ask them to send me a picture of their tongue, or if they're in person, I, I, I look at their tongue. And what is so great about the tongue is you're, it's a kind of, you get a chance to peer into the inside of the person's body. And uh, re really, like, full stop right there, that's what makes the tongue uh, so incredible. It's a window into the gastrointestinal tract uh, and what the gastrointestinal tract looks like and, and what it is. And so uh, that is, um, that's key, very key. So what happens on your tongue happens in your uh, digestive tract. So if you eat a chili and that chili is very hot in your mouth, well, it's going to create heat in your digestive tract and it's going to irritate those tissues in your digestive tract, just like it did uh, in your mouth. And so what food does to your mouth, it does to your digestion. And in some level, it also does that to your blood. Um, and the reverse is also true. What happens in your digestive tract also happens on the tongue. Uh, sometimes you, know, you may have had that experience of having, like, looking at your tongue and seeing red dots on your tongue. And that's a sign that there's heat uh, in your body, somewhere in your body. If it's on the tip of your tongue or anterior third of your tongue, it could be a sign that of catching a cold. Uh, I, I've, seen, I've seen it on cartoons many times that, that they'll show a person who's sick with uh, red spots on their tongue. And so I know that people know about that sign and they know it means something to do with sickness, but what does it really mean? And that is part of what we're here to talk about is what can we do to get in the information um, about a person's body. Where, where do we look? What signs do we, uh, do we check out? And so I think of the tongue as like peering down the opposite side of the periscope into the submarine, right? We're used to thinking of a person looking out from the, out uh, of the submarine through the periscope. But I think of looking at the tongue as kind of looking down into the periscope uh, and seeing what's going on inside the submarine. So the tongue is a gatekeeper. It's a gatekeeper to your digestive tract. Nothing really gets into your body without the tongue's approval. Um, you know, maybe you'll take a breath through your nose, but, uh, but really your taste buds, your tongue and your nose work together to accept food. And, um, and so tongue is a really important organ in Ayurveda. Uh, as much as diet's important, uh, that's just, you know, and you know that diet's so important in Ayurveda. Well, that should give you an uh, inkling into uh, what I, how, how the importance that Ayurveda gives to the tongue. So tongue coatings, um, uh, uh, bacteria in your tongue, other ailments distort your taste and can lead to incorrect uh, food cravings. And so we want to keep our tongue relatively clean uh, so that we, don't, we, can, uh, we can taste food without that distortion. Uh, a little thing I want everyone to just to remember is that taste is on the tongue, but flavor is in the nose. So most of the, you know, your tongue, your nose is much more sensitive in terms of exactly identifying what it is that you're eating. And the taste buds on their tongue are, are sort of general. You can taste uh, bitter, sour, salty, uh, pungent, uh, astringent, and sweet taste in Ayurveda. Uh, and that's it. Uh, Western medicine, I think, has five tastes, and they've discovered 
that there's perhaps a taste bud for calcium and also um, there's other interesting things too about taste buds. Like your lungs have some bitter taste buds in them too. The taste buds aren't just on the tongue. Anyway, that's uh, umami might be another taste. Uh, so the scientific ex uh, understanding of taste has expanded in the last 20 years. So a lot of times people get really excited when they talk about the pulse in Ayurveda. There's something, people think there's something really mystical about the, po uh, the pulse. And, and sometimes what they're really saying is that the pulse is a mystery, right? The pulse is, is somewhat hard. Uh, and also uh, the pulse is very reactive. A person, uh, if a person's nervous or a person's anxious, the pulse will change immediately. But the tongue doesn't change that quickly. So the tongue changes somewhat on a daily basis, somewhat on a weekly basis, somewhat on a yearly basis. Uh, but it's, but it all, it's all together uh, much slower. Your coating can change day to day, but the tongue shape takes a long time to change. And so uh, the body shape of the tongue is more constitutional or long-term and chronic, the color is more chronic, uh, but the coating is uh, subacute, you know, or even acute, it can change uh, by the day. So um, it's been noted just in Ayurveda as an aside, the similarity between reproductive tissue and the inside of the mouth, that they're both selective organs. And so there's just been some, you know, sort of, uh, uh, esoteric um, contemplation about choice and taste and style and even in fashion, right? Your taste for fashion or taste in architecture and taste in art. So there's been some folks who've expounded and contemplated on uh, the subtleties of how we of how we talk about uh, taste. So tongue is easier to learn and less subjective than the pulse because you can just see it You're using your eyes. And pulse uses touch. So it's a lot harder to teach pulse because you can't teach somebody what you're feeling, but you can talk, you can look at, both people can look at a tongue at the same time. And uh, it's, it's a little bit easier. We're a little more oriented or, uh, around our eyes. And, um, and there's a number of other reasons why I think we should really take a look at the tongue. The tongue shows the condition of fluids in your body. So how's your blood doing? Even if, if you're dehydrated or if your blood is deficient, uh, if your blood, if you eat a lot of um, sweet, rich foods late, uh, lately, that's going to show up as a coating on the tongue. But if you are eating a very light diet, uh, that coating will disappear. If you're uh, metabolism really is really strong and fired up, then uh, you'll see that coating disappear. So tongue is going to show conditioning of the fluid, whether there's excess, deficiency, whether there's toxins. The tongue is going to show the strength of your metabolism and temperature, whether it's hot or cold, the strength of the, of the, of the client in general. So when you look in, uh, you know, if you ever go to the fish market, and you buy a fish, you're always looking at the fish's eye, right? And you say, oh, is that a fresh fish or not? Have you ever bought a whole fish before? It's just one of the ways that you use to assess the health and freshness of the fish. Well, we do that with the tongue. The tongue sort of shows uh, freshness and, the sh and strength and constitutional strength. And, uh, and so that's what we mean when we say, the tongue shows the strength of your agni, um, the temperature going in your body. Is your body generally hot or cold? Uh, the strength of the client and the level of ojas. Now, some people on the call won't know what ojas means, but you kind of got the gist of what I, what I was saying in that analogy with the fish market. So uh, like, the, like the pulse, uh, the, the tongue also shows uh, the gunas and doshas. These are, the way, these are some of the tools that Ayurveda practitioners use to assess imbalances. Uh, and the tongue and the pulse both show those. All right, so um, this whole idea of looking at a part of the body and assessing it, uh, we, sh we should just spend just a moment talking about that as we're getting deeper into the tongue and we're gonna start looking at lots of different tongues. And really uh, the goal uh, when you're assessing any part of the body 
is to just be mindful of these three different levels of awareness, right? The first level of awareness of a practitioner is, is that knowing the, whole, the person's whole body, they can tell you what's happening in any square inch of the body, right? So if I, if I knew a person's constitution and their general imbalances, and then I looked at the tongue, I could tell you how their um, imbalances and constitution is affecting the tongue. That's level one. Level two now is how do you diagnose the whole body from the tongue, right? So this is the other way around. If you just looking at the tongue, can you tell me what's happening in the whole rest of the body? Now, for some people, that may seem like an impossibility, or that may seem like a romantic idea, or a, even a mystical idea. But I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna say that uh, why not? Every main organ in your body does something really important. And so we should be able to see its effects everywhere in the body. So if you give me any square inch of the body, we could talk about it for a few hours. We're not, uh, in other words, uh, we're, uh, there's just so many levels of detail everywhere you look. And that's what we're going to do on the tongue is we're going to get into that level of detail. So another uh, level of awareness is to be able to know your client's uh, doshas, constitution, and imbalance by the time you finish scheduling an appointment over the phone, right? You're hearing their voice, and their voice is rich with information about their personality, their imbalances, et cetera. And the fourth level of a, of a uh, practitioner is that you can perceive the very nature of the client, and with a, within a few short words or small gestures, reach into the heart of your client and inspire them in the right direction to heal themselves, right? Um, so that's a whole nother level. And I've run across people like that where a person, you, you meet them, you know, maybe it was a person in a cafe or in the street and they say one little thing uh, and you just, you know, you just end up thinking about that even years later. I've got a few examples of that where people have just said something to me that I really just had to stop and think about that for many, uh, for a long time. And that's inspired, uh, you know, me in many ways throughout my life. So, all right, so what are we going to talk about? We're going to talk about what to look for. We're going to talk about how to interpret various tongue signs. Uh, here we see a tongue on the right with, uh, what do you see on it? You see some coating. You see it's a little pale uh, in the back, but a red tip, some uh, red dots even, some cracks forming. Uh, what does all that mean? So, um, let's talk about the anatomy of the tongue just for a minute. Uh, we have these different papilla on the tongue. Uh, you see here filiform papilla, fungiform papilla, on different parts of the tongue have different kinds of papilla. And the papilla is just those basically those little rough bumps on your tongue. And notice in the back of the tongue, they're much bigger. And people look in the back of their tongue and see these two raised bumps. And sometimes they, they're alarmed and they uh, think to themselves, oh, is that a problem? Or is there something wrong on my tongue? And there isn't. That's normal. It's natural. Those are the different papilla on your tongue. And what you see here, if you look at the upper right of the screen, you see this uh, little note here on about taste buds. Notice where the taste buds are. They're in this little crevice around the uh, papilla. And so the, the chemicals that you're tasting have to seep in to the sides of those taste buds, and then you taste your food. Here's a cross section of your tongue, just so you know what it looks like. Now you see the top of your tongue, but most people don't really think of their tongue as having this shape or even being such a thick muscle, but it is. So I, I like this cross section because it gives us a real understanding. Now here's another thing that's kind of funny is, or, or interesting is that this soft palate See, there's the bone here above the, uh, the roof of your mouth. You can rub your tongue on the top of your mouth and you'll feel that bone. But as you go towards the back of your mouth, uh, you'll see that it gets kind of soft and that's the soft palate. And you can move that around a little bit. We use that in speech. And um, we should get awareness of that because that helps us actually clear our sinuses and clear our nose. And, uh, good thing. So, and Ayurveda, we're always uh, developing our awareness of our own anatomy. And so how are we going to analyze and look at the tongue? 
Well, really, when I look at a client's tongue, I don't just look at their tongue, by the way. So, um, so what, do I, what do I do is I kind of journey inward into the client, right? This is a way of, of thinking where whenever I'm doing assessment, I always go outside in and I always go top to bottom. So what does this mean? When I approach a client and I'm going to analyze their tongue, the first thing I'm looking for is to smell their breath. The next thing I'm going to be looking at is the skin around their lips and the lips itself and the teeth and the back of the throat. And then finally, I'm going to get to the tongue. And so uh, you, as you can see here, I'm getting into all the information that's presented to me when I'm looking at the tongue. Let's take a look at a normal tongue. This is a pretty normal tongue. You know, we can all find things that are not normal on this tongue and every tongue, really. Uh, it's a little bit on the pale side, yeah. And there's a little bit of a depression in the back of the tongue. Uh, I even see a little bit of coating in the back of the tongue. But I'm going to say that that coating is a good thing, actually, in the back there. But what do we notice overall? It's that this is a healthy tongue. This is, uh, the tongue is red to pink. Uh, the tongue should always be just a tad on the pale side. That means that you're adequately hydrated and the blood is sufficiently diluted. But um, as you become more dehydrated, the blood becomes more concentrated and that could lead to a darker tongue. But here we see a fresh looking uh, tongue in general. Breath should have no smell. The teeth should be pearly white, not gray or yellowish. Um, if the teeth are gray or yellow, that could mean less enamel or a magnesium deficiency. Or the teeth could be gray due to vada ama from the colon. Or they could be yellowish due to bile components in the blood. So I'm, I love looking at the teeth. The teeth are white, so they show up any impurities in the blood. It's one of the things that I always get from the looking at the teeth is impurities in the blood. Gray is vada, yellow is usually pizza. The saliva on the tongue, I'm going to be looking at that too. Saliva should be not too thick or stringy. There should be no bubbles on the surface of the tongue. Sometimes I look at a client's tongue and I see lots of little bubbles, almost like a froth on the surface of their tongue. That means that their, that their uh, saliva has a higher viscosity. And the tongue shouldn't uh, look, be too rough looking either. Um, that would mean that it's too dry. Right, if you look on the surface of the tongue and it kind of looks like a cat's tongue, you know, a cat's tongue is like sandpaper. If your tongue sort of has that dry look to it, that means your tongue is too dry. Maybe the saliva is too thin. But if you see a froth, the saliva is too thick. If your saliva feels a little slippery, it's too thick too. If you open, if the client opens the mouth and you see a string of saliva from the roof of the client's mouth to the tongue, then the, blood, then the uh, saliva is very thick. So a normal uh, tongue is not going to be too thick to saliva, not too stringy, not too dry. There'll be a nickel-sized thin coating in the back, which means you have a little bit of reserve. We don't want that to disappear. We'll talk about that as we move forward. In the back of the tongue, you may have two bumps on the back of your tongue on either side. Uh, that's, that's normal. That's perfectly normal. And if you don't really have that, that's okay, too. Uh, if you uh, a normal tongue has no cracks at all on it. So if your tongue has some cracks on it, that's, that is a, a sign of some pathology. And the tongue should um, have those little bumps on it, those papilla, that it shouldn't be just a shine, very shiny, uh, smooth tongue. A brief note about the underside. The underside of the tongue should have a relatively pink color and the veins on the underside of the tongue shouldn't be distinct. We'll talk about that too. Your tongue should be shaped uh, like a flat U, not a pointy tip, not a V, not too swollen, not too thin either. You know, good muscle tone as well. Engagement should be relaxed and the tongue should be still, but it should be toned. It shouldn't look like a blob, but it shouldn't look curled up or nor very stiff either. The body color should be pink like watermelon or fresh pork with a slight redness at the tip, which means that the blood is sufficiently warm and, and that your blood is able to nourish your whole body. So I would say that this tongue, that this tongue picture really uh, exemplifies that, the U shape, a little bit of redness at the tip. Um, it, it doesn't look too stiff, 
but it doesn't look like just a blob either. Yeah. Great. A few things you want to be careful of when you're assessing the tone. Different lighting situations show different colors. So don't be fooled by that. Try to notice the lighting in the rest of the photo first. Look at the person sends you a photo of their tongue. Look at the walls, look at their hair, their skin, and then judge the tongue in relation to that. So the, it's best to diagnose the tongue in a room with no windows. So the lighting is always the same. If you have a, a, in your clinic a room that doesn't have a window to the outside world, every time you look at the tongue, you're seeing it in the exact same lighting condition. That's the best. Um, a light bulb to the side of the tongue can reveal more about the texture, but overhead light reveals, um, may reveal the whole tongue better. Uh, so, you know, you, uh, sometimes the, uh, if the light is in a certain spot, you'll get a reflection off the surface of the tongue that can distort things. Uh, so you can just look out for that. Tell your clients not to use a tongue scraper before the appointment so you can see their coating. And tell your client to present the tongue in a relaxed manner, not too stiff, not too, uh, just let the tongue be out. But if the client has some trouble relaxing the tongue or if the tongue is quivering and things like that, that itself is a sign that, that their nervous system is not relaxed. And we can read that. Uh, various things can distort uh, the tongue. Uh, sucking on a sweet could irritate a portion of the tongue, a lozenge or a candy. Drinking coffee or eating food can distort the color on the tongue. So this is uh, just to show you uh, some of the things that can affect accurate assessment. You want to be mindful of that. And really, you'll notice that I'm, I'm giving you a lot of detail here. I'm giving you all the detail. Um, this is, you know, this is what we give our students in, 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 in school. And so I'm going to go through uh, this index um, so that you are great at assessing uh, the tongue. All right, so here's all the things we look at on the tongue. Take a look, I already mentioned it. Breath, lips, mouth, teeth, saliva, then coating. Notice I'm, I'm starting from the outside, going into the inside, going deeper. Coating of the tongue is even, is not, we're not, all, we're not in the tongue yet. The surface of the tongue is, is, uh, is really the skin covering the tongue, then the underside, then the shape of the tongue, the engagement of the whole tongue and the body color. Those are much more deep. Those are deeper, right? Those are actually inside the tongue, the shape, the engagement, and the body color. And so that, look at all these. Uh, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven different parts to tongue analysis and tongue observation. Now, I'm not making this complicated. This is just right as rain. This is very natural. We're going to look at all these things. This is just a part of our contemplation of it. And not that. Um, you know, it's, it's not complex. There's nothing about it that's complex. There's just, a, there's a lot there. And so we just take our time with it and we look at it the way an art uh, historian would uh, enjoy looking at a painting. Thank you for your interest in the tongue, for your interest in Ayurveda, and most importantly, for your interest in healing yourself, your families, and your communities. Every time you give to your body, your body gives back. And that's such a great gift. So I hope you truly loved learning about tongue diagnosis, which is so important in Ayurveda. And if you did like learning about this topic, consider joining us as a student.